humble ourselves before you, Lord, tonight. We bow the knee because every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. We'd rather do it in this life now before we miss the promise of heaven. We thank you, Lord, for a hope and a future. We thank you that we need fear no evil, for you are with us. We thank you, Lord, for the special anointing you had on our worship. And by the end of the service, Lord, every person here will know why the special anointing was here. Because there is blessing in obedience. We thank you, Father, that you have revealed these things to babes. Lord Jesus, you said it is hidden from others and you revealed them to babes. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We humble ourselves. We are humble that you reveal truth to us. Normal people, Lord, we're nothing special. But thank you for choosing us, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the church family, Lord. Thank you for everyone. Bless them, anoint them for giving up a Wednesday night to be with you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Body of Christ tonight. Tonight we are adjusting <coughs> to truth. To the real truth. So let's jump into the word immediately. Exodus 12. Thank you, Father, for the word. A textbook about your love. The story of Jesus Christ from Genesis to Revelation. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said to them, Pick out and take lambs for yourself according to your families and kill the Passover lamb. And you shall take a bunch of hyssop, dip it in the blood that is in the basin, and strike the lintel on the two doorposts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out of the door of his house until morning. For the Lord will pass through to strike the Egyptians. And when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two doorposts, the Lord will pass over the door and not allow the destroyer to come into your house to strike you. And you shall observe this thing as an ordinance for you and your sons forever. And it will come to pass when you come to the land which the Lord will give you, just as he promised that you shall keep this service. And it shall be when your children say to you, what do you mean by this service? That you shall say, it is the Passover sacrifice of the Lord who passed over the house of the children of Israel in Egypt when he struck the Egyptians and delivered our households. So the people bowed their heads and worshipped. The Lord our God, Yahweh, Elohim, instructed Moses, commanded Moses to keep the Passover of the Lord. If you read further into Judges, into Numbers, you will see that he commands his people to have the Passover day 
on the 14th day of Nisan, the first month on the Jewish cal calendar, the 14th day. That is the command that they will stay on this command, keep this service on the 14th day of Nisan, which is 2023, the 5th of April today. Why? I know you have a lot of questions now. Why do we celebrate today? Why do we celebrate a Wednesday? Did you know that we do not work according to the Jewish calendar? We have the Gregorian. <sighs> My tongue struggles with that word. Gregorian. No? Gregorian. Gregorian. Whatever. That, that's our calendar. I'm sure I, I need to know what a calendar is by now. What? We were born according to the Gregorian calendar, which is also the Roman calendar. Not the Jewish calendar. The Roman calendar. Now let's look at it. Since me and you, we were born, we were born with, uh, when you went to kindergarten, you would, they would say, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you will learn the days of the week. What were you actually learning? Let's, let's have a look at that. According to our calendar, the Gregorian calendar, when you say it's Sunday, you say it's the day of the sun god. Oops. When you say it's Monday, you say it's the day of the moon god. When you say it's Tuesday, you say, actually Tuesday is just another day for Mars, which was the god of war. So if you want to know why Tuesdays feel so long, that's why. It's battle. You say, well, it doesn't matter. We, we've grown up like that. Why does it matter? Um, why does it matter if January, February, March... All those also shows the pagan gods. We've grown up like that. We've we thought that since we were small. We didn't know. Isn't that true? We didn't know. And you know what? This is not an easy sermon to give you. I, I, don't, I don't like change. That's the truth of it. Who here likes change? Sudden changes. We don't like change. But you know what I like less than change? Is knowing that I've lived most of my life in a lie. I've been lied to. I have been deceived. Worst of all, this church has been running for three years. That means for two years. I deceived this church. I'm standing in front of you, humbling myself. I'm asking your forgiveness. And I truly did not know. There's no excuse. No excuse. Absolutely none. So church, will you forgive me? You are forgiven. But we are correcting that tonight. We are adjusting back to truth. We will not keep going like this. We will not live a lie any longer. We will bow our knee in front of our God and we will give him all honor and praise as he deserves. Not as the world does. We can't afford to... to let me go on. Let me see. Let, 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 let us look. So we read where the celebration of Passover began. And the Israelites could not see it yet. But we did intense Bible study on the crucifixion. Right? Did you see the similarities of what I just read? And now we're going all the way back to Exodus, to the book of, of Exodus, to Moses. And the Lord has a plan. He has a perfect plan. 
They can't see what we are seeing, but they are actually celebrating the Messiah to come. The perfect lamb. The lamb without spot or blemish. The perfect lamb that will be seen. The last sacrifice. The Israelites can't see it yet. But we can. On that 14th day of Nisan. They cut the lamb's throat. They killed the lamb. They took the blood, just as they killed our Lord Jesus Christ. On the same day. They took the blood. What did they do with the hyssop plant? They dipped it into the blood. They lifted it and struck it against the doorposts. What did they do with Jesus on the cross when he said, I thirst. They took the hyssop plant, dipped it in the wine, and brought it to the perfect lamb's mouth. The last sacrifice. We went through the Gospels. We went through the crucifixions. We saw all the similarities of what the Lord is talking here about the Passover. A thousand four hundred years before the crucifixion of Christ, the Israelites were celebrating the perfect lamb, the sacrifice of the lamb, commanded by God to do it on the 14th day of Nisan. All because the perfect lamb of our Lord Jesus Christ, God became flesh, and died for our freedom, our salvation. Everything you and I needed to be reconciled with God, with the Father, was given through the Lamb's sacrifice. And they were celebrating it already. The destroyer passed over their houses but could not come in, just as the destroyer cannot touch the children of God that is washed in that blood, that perfect blood of the Lamb, cannot touch us, cannot come close to us. But what does the enemy do? You see, the perfect plan was made, and the enemy watched with envy from afar. He knew when God spoke to Eve that her seed will crush his head. He knew. He knew that there will have to be a perfect blood sacrifice to wash me and you clean so we can go to heaven after what Adam and Eve did. It has to be. So the enemy knows exactly what the plan is and what does he do? What does the enemy do? He comes to steal, kill, and destroy and lie, of course, is the father of lies, the first liar. That's what he does. That's what he does. That's what he did from the beginning. Let's go all the way back, Adam and Eve, in the garden. God gave them a perfect home. One law, don't eat from that tree. That was it. That, that was their law. That was all they were supposed to do, but no. The snake came, as he still does, because he's, it, what's that, that thing they say that you can't teach an old dog new tricks outside? So what does he do? He lies to Eve and Adam, because he was standing next to her. He lies to them, first of all. He steals from them. He steals their innocence from them. He kills their relationship with God. And then he destroys their perfect home. He sends them out. Destroys a perfect life of peace. And one law. And they had to go work for a living. Women have to, every time you have to give birth, you, you know what the Lord said, it will be in pain. So that is what the enemy does. So what can the enemy do? possibly do with this perfect Passover 
sacrifice. The lamb, the perfect lamb, Jesus Christ. What can he possibly do in a thousand four hundred years to disrupt or put his finger anywhere in the Passover? Well, he comes to do exactly what he does. He steals, kills, and destroys. <sighs> He's much smarter, apparently, than most people. So let's go back and see where it started. We go all the way back. We're not even going to the word right now. I'm just going to tell you the story right now. And it's a disgusting story, so bear with me. Okay. We take this all the way back to Noah. Do you remember who Noah is? Not Noah, the Nike Empire's dog. Noah. With the ark, with the boat, and all the animals. Now, we've spoken about his great-grandson before. His great-grandson's name is Nimrod. Right? So, the great-grandson of Noah, Nimrod, was believed to be a Nephilim. What does that mean? It means he was half angel, half human. Exactly what the Lord came to destroy with the flood crept onto the ark, most likely in one of Noah's son's wives. And he was a strong man. And what else did he do that we can remember? He was the ruler of Babylon. And he built the Tower of Babel. Babel in Afrikaans. I'm going to throw Afrikaans English words together tonight because there's a reason for it. I'll tell you later what that reason is. In English, it will be Babel. In Afrikaans, it's Babel. See, different pronunciations, different sounds. Same word. Okay. <clears throat> so, he ruled Babylon. <clears throat> and he took himself a wife with the name Simarinus, his queen. Simarinus. And shortly after they got married, Nimrod died. And since all the people had this respect and love for Nimrod, the enemy saw a gap to turn Nimrod into a god. So what did he do? He told the people, Nimrod is now the sun god, which we would call Baal in, in English, Baal in Afrikaans. He became the sun god. He became the first human that died on earth that they made a god, someone to worship the sun god. So that's what they did. So you can trace Baal all the way back to Nimrod and his wife, Samurainus, Asherah. Okay. So Samurainus gets pregnant. Guess, guess how, ladies? You have, to, you have to hear this to appreciate it. So Samurainus got pregnant by the rays of the sun. Stay out of the sun. Be careful. Not too much sun. Ooh. They believe Samurainus got pregnant by the rays of the sun. Baal, the sun god now, made Samurainus pregnant by rays of the sun. Very interesting. And she gave birth to a son, and the son's name is Tammuz. Now, if you want to know... When you want to see where Tammuz and where during our years and our days Tammuz is worshipped, oh, that's very easy. You see, because Tammuz was the son of a Nephilim, so he's got wings. And Tammuz was a great hunter, so what else does he have? A bow and arrow. Who are we speaking about? Cupid. Cupid. Tammuz is worshipped on Valentine's Day. Children of God, were we not called to love everyone the same every day? 
Why do we need a day of love? Ever thought why that was worked into our calendar? Roman calendar, Gregorian calendar, all their gods and their calendar. And we have a lack of knowledge. And we celebrate these things without knowing what they are about. is so Thomas as an older man fell deeply in love with his mommy and he married her incest okay that is my mother wife that's what happened there. So those two got married. Now, Thomas, for 40 years, took his father's place on the throne. He became a great hunter. Remember Cupid, bow and arrow. He became a great hunter. Everyone adored him. And um, one day, while he was out, he was killed by a wild boar. Shortly after that, Samarinus died. And she went, according to them, to her husband, Baal, which was not ready for her. No, he wasn't ready for her. So what did he do? He put her in a giant egg and he sent her back to her. I don't know. Guys, there was no Google, okay? There was no Googly. There was, there was stories, okay? He sent her in a giant egg back to earth. And the first thing she did when the egg struck the Afrikaans, Ephrates, English, Euphrates, Euphrates, river, Euphrates, or Euphrates, river. When the egg struck that river, the egg broke. Samarinus Ashera came out and the first thing she did, did is saw a bird and change it into an egg laying a rabbit. That's what she did. Like I said, no, no Google. There were stories, and what does the devil do? The devil stands in the corner slow clapping those stories. <gasps> That's what happens. Sure, why not? And that is why Tammuz, Asherah, and Baal were worshipped for centuries. Go look through the Bible how many times the Lord got angry with his people turning to those gods. They came all the way back to Nimrod, all the way back to Noah's great-grandson. That's where it all started. Now you would think, dum, 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 dum. Stop thinking that. You know why? Because you and me, we're crawling out of that hole tonight for the first time in our lives. We did not know what we were celebrating. We did not understand what we, we just blindly, but I was sincere. I was sincere. I was a Christian. I was so sincere. I celebrated every Easter. I was so sincere. I was sincerely wrong. Sincerely wrong. And when Christians climb out of the pit, others are still trying to climb out of, do we turn back and laugh at them? No, we do not. We turn back and hand them. We give them a hand. We say, come. Let us pull you out. You do not know. You have a lack of knowledge of what you are worshipping this time of year. And we help them. And we correct them with love. I'm not standing here judging anyone. Because I did this. Each time I ate an Easter egg as a child, hunted Easter eggs... Gave my children Easter eggs. I did all these things. I'm guilty 
in front of the Lord. I'm not going to pretend like I'm perfect. Oh, no, I didn't know these things. I didn't grow up in an extremely Christian home. I, I didn't know. I didn't know till last week. And I repent today. Because there's time to change. Thank the Lord that he opens our eyes. That he brings the truth. Eggs was a symbol of fertility amongst many gods in the pagan faith. Many, many of them. So every spring. Ever wondered if today is the crucifixion, if today is the Passover of the Lord, where Jesus was crucified, if it is the 5th of April, why then? Why then does Easter not move accordingly towards the Jewish calendar? Why is it always on a different date? You see, because Baal and Asherah got praised and were worshipped all over. And they lifted up a special Sunday and they called it Easter. Why is Sunday moving? Why is that Sunday on another date every year? Because they work it out according to the Roman cal calendar and they call it Easter because of the spring Equinox, where the day and the night comes together. It's, it, it's uh, what do you call that? Exactly the same length. Yeah. The day and night are the same length. Spring equinox. So now, <laughs> we were sincerely wrong. No, the things we were told, the lies we were told was wrong. So what happened on the spring equinox that, no, it's not that bad. You would say it's not that bad. I'm sincere. I'm sincere. Yes, I celebrate Easter, but I'm sincere. I sincerely love Jesus. Okay, let's see what they did on that day. You're going to see some relevance here to what the churches do now. Now, first of all, You've got a sunrise and a sunset service. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's who started that? Numeral no, Rhodes Oaks, th those guys. What did they do? What was the service all about? Well, you see, they would all go to the sunrise service and there would be a special altar in the house of Asherah, in the temple of Asherah, where they would pick the prettiest virgins in the village and rape them. They would impregnate them on the altar. Believe me, not all of them were willing. I'm going to call rape, rape. That's what it is. They rape them. And after they rape them, what happens next? Well, next, they take the babies born from last year, which is about three months old now, Put them on the altar and slaughter them. And what then? Oh, they take pretty little eggs and dip it into their blood. Are you shocked yet? Mm. Okay, good. Good. So they took the eggs dipped it into the baby's blood and gave it to the children. I actually saw a funny picture in my head about this because I tried to make it better for myself because I was, I was not happy <laughs> when I read this. And I, I thought they're probably giving the children eggs saying, oh, you didn't get sacrificed this year. And you didn't get sacrificed this year. And you didn't get sacrificed this year. Hey. Dipped in other baby's blood. Thank goodness, not you. And that's where Easter eggs comes from. Hmm. Okay. Remember Tammuz? 
Now that that's the early morning, the sunrise service. Now remember Tamus Cupid was killed by a wild boar in his 40th year. In his 40th year of that. So most countries, I do not know if it is a custom in South Africa. I can't really remember Easter dinners in my house. If this was a custom in your houses, just raise your hand so I would know. But because Tammuz was killed by a wild boar, they would serve ham for Sunday dinner. No. Okay. Not such a big deal in South Africa, but in other countries it is still done. In other countries, it's still the Sunday ham. They still celebrate the years of Tammuz, the mommy loving son. I don't know how else to put that. Do you know what, children of God? Have you heard of Jesus Christ yet? Does Easter have anything to do with Jesus Christ? Oh. Oh my goodness. What now? What now? So Jesus is no way to see to be seen in this story. No, it's pagan gods and baby blood. Have you ever heard our Lord, our Yahweh, our God ask us to sacrifice babies? To dip eggs into their blood? And don't even think about Isaac. Isaac was 30 years old when he was on that altar. Don't think he was still a baby. He wasn't. God never asked us this. He never asked us to bow the knee in front of other gods. He never said, oh, the first commandment, come on, my people. You will have no other God. We have one God. We will have no other God. Now, why are we celebrating things with so many other gods involved? Why are we doing this? And we've been doing it for years and years and years. And it's the most normal thing. Go look in the shops, Easter eggs and bunnies everywhere you look. Everywhere it's Tammuz and Asherah. My goodness, people, what have we done? What have we done? Our father called for a Passover on the 14th day of Nisan. And that was the day the perfect lamb was also crucified. That was the day. Today, the 5th of April, 2023. It moves every year, but not according to the Gregorian calendar. Would you say that obedience is better than sacrifice? When it comes to these things, the devil took something pure, something beautiful, our salvation. Our Messiah, our Lord, our God, our King, Jesus Christ. And he took something and he perverted it. And he told us to celebrate something else. And pretend like we're celebrating Jesus this weekend. The children are going to look for some eggs. You didn't get sacrificed this year. You didn't get sacrificed this year. People, I was sho shocked. I, I was stunned. Some pastors are speaking out about this. None in South Africa as far as I know. I think there's one or two I can... I don't think Easter that much, but there's some pastors speaking out now. But when will we wake up? How long will this continue? Go look for the eggs with the baby blood on it. Hey. Mm. Churches are doing this. Churches. They will be doing it this Sunday. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know what to say. The devil came, took salvation, stole it, 
kill it, killed it, destroyed it, and we swallowed it. We swallowed it. We did it for years. Let's look at the names. Remember I said, listen carefully to the names. Because let's go back. Because if the devil finds something that works, he likes to duplicate it. Okay, if it's not broke, don't fix it. That's probably his motto. Mm -hmm. Why did the story, how is it possible that this started in Babylon and we in South Africa, what, what, go check where Babylon was, really, go, go have a look. Down here in South Africa, we celebrate the same things. How did that happen? Ever asked yourself that? Let's think what happened with Nimrod. What did he do? He built the Tower of Babel. He said, I'm going to build it to the sky. I'm going to build it onto the throne room of God. And the Lord said, look at these people standing in unity. We have to stop them. Because whatever they put their minds to, if they stand in unity, they will do it. You see what the, what the devil did first? He broke the unity just now. The Lord gave something else. The devil broke the unity between the children of God, between the churches. Because the one won't stand for that and the other one will. And the unity is broken. And he brought confusion over those people that already prayed to these gods. Remember? They already had their little pagan gods. And the Lord confused their languages and they scattered all over the earth. And they took all these pagan gods with them. All over the earth. So the devil just duplicated, duplicated. Let me show you how bad this is. I'm going to read you the names. This is, remember, if the language get confused, it means Babel, Babel. Different, do you see? And the further you go along, and the more the language, you can ask someone from, I don't know, from, wherever they are from, just to say these names for you, and it will sound different. So this is what it sounds like all over the world. This is how it began. We have Nimrod and Simarines, which became Baal and Asherah. In Egypt, they became Isis and Osiris. Same story. In Greece, they became Aphrodite, and Adonis, in Rome, Venus and Cupid, and in the Far East, Zoroaster, Zoroaster, the seed of Asherah. Did you hear what happened? Easter. Just drop the Zora. And you've got your Easter. And that's what we are celebrating every year. And saying, but we are doing it for Jesus Christ. It's not possible. If you are doing it for Jesus Christ, why aren't you doing it on the right date? If you are doing it for Jesus Christ, why are you asking your children to look for Asherah eggs? I've got a lot of questions. I've got a lot of questions. And it's time that Christians start asking hard questions. Let's ask those questions. Let's get back to what the Lord wanted for us. You know, don't, don't be afraid of the wrath of God. Be afraid of bless, missing the blessing. Did you feel the anointing in this room as we worship tonight? Why does the Lord anoint such a worship on a Wednesday night? Because we're doing the right thing for the first time in our lives. We're doing the right thing. We can't stop now. Let's go to Judges 2 verse 13. While you're going there, you're going to ask, but how did this... Did, did this seep into the churches it's a very easy answer 
way back when, if you want to see the blood spilled, go look at your history books. See the blood spilled under the Catholic Church. Why? Because Constantine might have made a political decision one day. We already learned about the Nicolaitans, what Jesus said, I hate their deeds. He hates their deeds. We already heard about that. We know what they did. So now Constantine came and they were slaughtering the disciples of Jesus Christ like you won't believe. We have spoken about it in Bible study. And then Constantine saw this is not, uh, he does not gain politically from killing all these Christians. So they already have a temple, Asherah's temple. They have the temple. It's got the nice long tower that we know with the bell on it these days. Nice long tower, uh, Asherah pole. Already have that. So let's do something else. Let's open the church doors. No, we'll never be a church. The temple's doors. And let the church in. Let the children of God come in. Because this is not serving me politically. We need to bring all these guys together. The first priest was not a Christian. He was a pagan. He was an Asherah priest. Please go look it up. I'm actually writing about it in the book. He was a pagan priest. He just took the position and said, mm, okay, I'll improvise a bit. Just a little bit. Okay? Not too much. Just a little bit. And he started to mix everything together. And that's where the whole Catholic Church comes from. And because we were born in this, this country that came from churches, the first churches here was directly broken off of the Catholic Church. We continued these things like it was the most normal thing in the world. Let's go check out Judges 2, verse 13. They forsook the Lord and served Baal. And the Ashtoreths, there's another pronunciation. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, so he delivered them into the hands of plunderers, who despoiled them, and he sold them into the hands of their enemies all around, so that they could no longer stand before their enemies. Wherever they went out, the hand of the Lord was against them for calamity, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn to them. And they were greatly distressed. Go to Romans 11. You're just going to say, Ah, oh, Pastor Melania only preaches out of the Old Testament. How do we know this is true? Okay. <laughs> <clears throat> We go to Romans 11, verse 1 to 4. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, near. Yeah. <laughs> That's a no from me. Just not so. <laughs> yeah. I love the word. We can read something else too. <laughs> I say then. Has God cast away his people? Certainly not. For I am also an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. God has not cast away his people whom he foreknew, or do not know what the scripture says of Elijah, how he pleads with God against Israel, saying, Lord, they have killed your prophets and torn down your altars, and I alone am left, and they seek my life. But what does the divine response say to him? I have reserved myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Have we bowed? Before Baal? Yes. Yes, we have. Let's not lie. Mm -hmm. 
Yes, we have, and we have taught our children to do the same. Have you ever seen the Eucharist in a Catholic church? Who has seen it? I'm going to show it to you. This is the Eucharist. Yeah, you've seen it. I've seen it. This is, can everyone see? Can the camera see? This is the Eucharist. It stays hidden all year until this weekend, Easter Sunday. Easter, Asherah, on Baal Sunday, the sun god. You see what's happening here? And then, then they take this out on a Sunday and they lift it high and the priest walk along the aisle and everyone bow and worship. The whole Catholic Church bows and worships the sun god. The egg of Asherah and the half crescent moon holding it up. Is this Christian? Can you call yourself a follower of Christ while you bow and worship this? Do you know what they call that in the middle? They say, Oh, no, it's not an egg. Don't be silly. It's actually the Eucharist bread. Do you know what that means? That means the sacrificial victim. Now tell me, children of God, was Jesus ever a victim? Oh, goodness, no. What did he say? They do not take my life from me. I give it willingly. No one can take my life from me. He was not a sacrificial victim. And they actually believe that this is the body, the actual body of Christ. But it's clearly an egg. Surrounding by the sun. Everything I just told you came together here. This is what has been passed down to our churches. This is what we've been doing. You say, no, but we don't have idols. We don't, we don't, we don't do that. Mm -hmm. Don't we? Yeah, I do like chocolate. But it doesn't have to be in an egg form. And yes, I did not get sacrificed this year. But I'd rather just have a normal chocolate egg. Mm -hmm. So I looked at this and I looked at the Eucharist and I and I broke. I broke. I cried. And there was nothing else inside of me except repentance. And I said, Lord, what have we done? Lord, what have I done? What have we done? What have we done, Lord? What do we do now? Now we know. What do we do? Just tell us what to do, Lord. We have to fix this. Tell us what to do, Lord. This is too horrible. We cannot celebrate baby sacrifices. We can't do this. It's not even the right date, Lord. Everything was perverted. And he took me and he said, My child, go to ask because the question you ask has been asked before. Because every question we ask and every answer the Lord gives is in the word of God. And this is what happened to me because I was cut to the heart. That I was so deceived and I was so deceiving with this. Even if I only taught my children. <coughs> Listen to this. Therefore, let all the house of Israel now assuredly know assuredly that God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Now, when you when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? 
What shall we do? Then Peter said to them, Repent. Let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins. And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is to you and to your children and to all those who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call. And with many other words he testifies and he is testified and exhorted them, saying, Be saved from this perverse generation. Then those who gladly received his word were baptized, and that day about 3,000 souls were added to them. If you were not baptized, get yourself baptized and out of this sin. Child of God, we were baptized because we do not let things slip in this church. <laughs> we do not. But we still need to repent. We still have to come to repentance over this. We have done this. We have all done this. Since childhood, our parents taught us this. And then they want to get stuck on the fifth commandment. Honor your mother and your father. You did not get sacrificed this year. My goodness. <clears throat> My goodness. What have we done? We brought strange fire to our Lord. Unacceptable. It's unacceptable. We have been deceived and we deceived. We fell for it. And now we pray and we return to the 14th day of Nisan. This church will return to the true crucifixion. We will honor our Jesus Christ. We will not honor Asherah. We will not look for eggs. We <laughs> No, thank you. Because no one in this church was sacrificed. Do you understand now? Have you seen? What is the death toll during Easter? Have you wondered why? Because you worship it. So now you have to give the sacrifice. Then we say, oh, the devil. Oh, the devil. No, it wasn't the devil. It was you. You missed the blessing. Sacrifice was taken. And we wonder why. Why does so many have to die on this special, oh, it's a, it's a weekend for Jesus. No, it's not. <laughs> oh, no. You're lying to yourself. Stop that. Stop lying. Stop lying. The devil is a liar. He's the deceiver. We can't be that. So what do we do? What is our job from now on? First of all, we repent and we adjust to truth. And Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord, our God, our King, Jesus Christ, is the truth. Amen. And if our God said that you will celebrate Passover on the 14th day of Nisan, we will do it that way from now on. We will not compromise. If you do not like it, I'm not asking for votes. I'm not. If you do not like serving the Lord like he told you in the word to serve him, if you do not like it, I'm sure there's other churches you can go hunt for Easter eggs all over the place. You can. I do not care. But I will serve, me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Like he wants to be worshipped, like he wants to be served in spirit and in truth. So let's pray. Father, I ask that it starts with this church. The, uh, an awakening has happened tonight, Lord. You have awakened your children, our hearts, our minds, our souls, our spirits. You have awakened us, Lord. We are awake, Father. We know the truth now. The truth is Jesus Christ. He will always be the truth, always be the way, and always be the life. And we choose him. 
And we will not bow the knee to any other God, Lord, or we will not do it. We will serve you and you alone because you are Father. You are perfect in all of your ways and you have a perfect plan and a future for us, Lord. So today, tonight we come to you in full repentance. Forgive us, Lord. We are idolaters. We served other gods. We've done so for years. Forgive us, Father. We come to you humbly. What shall we do, Lord? We are cut to the heart. We apologize. And we know you are truthful and you are faithful to wash the sin off of us, Lord. We will do better, Father. <coughs> Forgive us, Father. Jesus Christ, be glorified and honored. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Stop alle klokke.